What's up, Nailistas? We are back with another nail video. And in this video, we are going to be doing some nails that I picked from my jar. What's in my jar is um, some different high schools in my city. And I picked out Benson High School. This is in honor of homecoming week or homecoming season. Stiletto. And I did ombre. So I have three different colors in my jar and each you know, color represents a, a different, um, yeah, category, I guess. So the high school that is going to represent the set or whatever, and then the shape, and then the design type. So the Benson High School, stiletto is going to be the shape, and ombre is going to be the style of nail. All right, so this is my plastic hand. We're gonna get right into it. And this video goes by pretty quickly. Um, I did a lot of editing on this video, so I'm gonna be kind of in and out of my topic. See there, I jump right into putting the press-ons on. So just kind of pay attention and listen to me. And if there's something that I need to um, you know, explain further, I'll hop in and do so. All right, so I wanted to talk about what it was like growing up in the 90s. So I am a late 80s baby. I say mid to late 80s baby. And by the time the 90s came around, like I was like four, you know, three going on four because my I have a late birthday. So uh, I just remember like the big floor model TVs. Um, there's so much that can that could be said. Like I remember, I kind of remember Bill Clinton becoming president because like the adults around me was making a big deal out of it. Um, I think Bush Senior was before him, and then like Ronald Reagan before him. Correct me if I'm wrong. I was a baby or not even born yet, so don't come for me. Um, but yeah, um, I kind of have memories from when I was like a toddler, but I'm not gonna get into that. So anyways, this is two iGel beauties that I'm using. Like I said, Benson colors are black, white, and green, like a winter green. And I even had looked it up and it could be like a regular green or a winter green. So I chose to go with winter green because my memory uh, from high school, cause I played sports. So I've been to all the high schools in my city. But I remember it being a dark green, so that's why I'm kind of lightening it. Um, I did some swatches in that iGel Beauty uh, color that you see there. I don't have the number. I know it's number 86. I forgot the name. But it's too dark. It comes out as black. So I lightened it up with this color called Denim, you know, from the same line. And I'm going to get started with doing my ombre. And you see the stiletto tips that I put on. And don't mind my plastic hand, y'all. She's busted because when I first started, I did not know what I was doing. I say that every video. But yeah, like, okay, so floor model TVs. Um, I remember the old cereal boxes and how they looked. But more about, like, socializing. Like, in the 90s, our parents made us go outside, especially if the sun was shining. Every Saturday, we had to go outside, you know. Not so much. My mom didn't make us go outside, like, after school. You know, if we were tired from school, we could either sit in the house, watch TV and kind of relax or uh, do homework or clean or something, of course. But on the weekend, in the summer, any type of break we got from school, it was go outside, go play. Uh, today's kids don't really, you know, believe in going outside. See, there are my swatches. The very far right one is like just straight out the green jar. The second one is when I first added and the third one, of course, is when I added more white. Uh, to lighten the tent. Okay, so we're going to get into it. But yeah, we had to go outside. There was no, there were, there was no internet at that time. Uh, I remember the telephone. There wasn't even cordless phones in my lifetime um, until later. That was like mid to late nineties that the cordless phone came about and caller ID. So we were the caller ID. <laughs> Growing up, I remember my mom taught us phone etiquette. You know, you say, hello, may I ask who's calling? Please hold. Like you, and if you didn't, my mom would get mad. Like, cause we were her receptionist slash secretaries. You couldn't say, who is this? She would get mad. Um, 
so yeah, like there was no caller ID in the early nineties. Um, I remember the rotary phone where you had to, it wasn't buttons. You had to use the rotary. Um, we did have one still when I came around, even though I knew that phone was kind of older because there was phones with buttons. I remember the phone had to go into a jack in your house. So if you see that little white box in your house, uh, on the, like on the floor or against the wall, that is a phone jack. Okay. That is where it's not for internet. It's for a house phone. So you can get, you know, your house phone. Um, the cord would be all over the house. We would get these long cords and my mom would buy jacks so the cord can go from the living room to the kitchen to wherever we needed it to. Uh, because, you know, this was before cordless phones. And like I said, the cordless phones came out in the about mid to late 90s. Um, and the cordless phones with the caller IDs on them. I remember about like 95, 96 is when caller ID came out. Um, there was a, a phone company in my city called, what is it, the Bell, U.S. Bell, or was it U.S. West was the phone company, um, and the building still sits where it was at today, right on uh, Saddle Creek, <laughs> that was the phone company, and you would see women coming out of that thing at like about five o'clock, because that's where most people, you know, worked at the phone company, um, to block your number, star 69, to find out the last number that called you was star 82. They all let me know if I'm bringing back any type of memories, okay? And then I remember when they came out with call waiting, call waiting came out when you had caller ID. So if you were on the phone and you heard the beep, you looked at that caller ID to see who was beeping in, okay? Now all this stuff is built into cell phones. So life was a little bit different. Um, we didn't have Uber Eats. And it's crazy because when I was a kid, I was like, man, I wish Taco Bell and Popeye's delivered. You know, the only places that delivered was Chinese and pizza. Okay. Um, like there was no internet until like 95, 96 is when the internet started hitting the mass public. Because by that time I was like in fourth grade. I mean, we had computers. But we had those old computers with the box, the butt on it. And only only game was on the computer was Oregon Trail. Um, and then the internet came out, you know, when I was in fourth grade. I remember taking computer classes. Is, that's when I was introduced to it. And that was like 95, 96. So do the math. If you know how old a fourth grader is. And I already told you on my birthday late. I don't mind sharing. I'm in my mid-30s. Um, so yeah, life is just, it's crazy to think about these things and how life evolved. I was even talking to my husband about how back in the day, the cars did not have, like it was a luxury to have automatic windows and you had to roll that window down. You had to crank it down. Okay. Um, how there were ashtrays in the back seat of a car, like those older cars, they had the little door armrest and the ashtray on the inside so you can ash in your car how nasty is that um I don't even know if newer cars come with cigarette lighters mine still have one because I have an older car but uh I don't use it for that I use it for you know charging my cell phone but I was just talking to him about some of those things and he's like yeah I remember that and it's like wow we are really getting older <laughs> and these kids today will never know about the ashtray in the door um, what else? Am, you know, of course, food and toys, but a lot of people talk about that. I just want to talk more about like how sociability was different. Um, my very first cell phone was a Nokia like brick phone, like everybody else my age. And the only game on that phone was Snake or Tetris. And that was through AT&T. And uh, I remember you had nights and weekends, free minutes, unlimited minutes were nights and weekends. So after 9 p.m. during the week, day that's when you get those free minutes sometimes it was eight o'clock on some carriers but I believe it was after nine and uh otherwise you're paying for those minutes that you're talking on that cell phone um let, let me think beepers pagers uh doctors had them at first but then they start letting everyday ordinary people carry be uh, beepers and all it was was to let somebody know you're trying to get a hold of them so you can leave a numeric message, like 143, which means I love you, um, or 911, which means emergency. 
or you just simply you call their beeper number and it's like an automated lady or man and the number that you call them from they they will call you back they will go to a pay phone which you don't see these anywhere in my city like the last pay phone stand was on 90th in this plaza where shopco used to be and they finally took that thing down because i used to use that pay phone like in the last 10, 15 years, you don't see pay phones anywhere because even homeless people have cell phones. I'm just saying, this is the times it's changed. You know, technology, we're a technology ridden people. I hope I was not talking this whole time and my microphone is not plugged in. Oh, well, if it is, I'm just going to keep it. So if my microphone wasn't plugged in, oh, well, now it is. But uh, this is too good for me to delete. But yeah. So pay phones are a thing of the past. Um, do people to get their papers delivered, their newspaper? Yeah, I think so. People still get their, I was telling my son today, um, I think it was yesterday, actually. I was telling my son that back in the olden, olden times, just like, you know, you have mail carriers today, there used to be milkman, milkman, or milk person that delivered the milk. Now that's way before my time, because for the most part, I remember my mom going to the store and getting our milk. And it used to taste a lot better than this crap y'all call milk today. Milk is so disgusting. Ugh. It tastes nothing like it did in the 90s. I mean, milk almost had like a creamy, sweet taste to it. Mm. Ugh. Anyways. When Roberts changed from uh, here in my local area, when Roberts changed to Highland, because it was Highland Roberts. Yeah. It, that was the decline of the decline of milk. So I don't drink milk. I try to get my calcium, you know, other ways, you know, cheese, ice cream. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like, what else was different? I'm on a ball here, like I'm on a road. Um, talking about pay phones, talking about milk being delivered. Um, restaurants, different, like. Pizza Hut was the stuff in the 90s, okay? Let me tell you. It's nothing like how they are today. I mean, they're, hold, they're holding on by a thread, just like Burger King. Burger King, I refuse to eat there. I'm not trying to diss nobody, but the Burger Kings in my city, and comment below if y'all notice any restaurant, like major food chains that have gone downhill, like McDonald's customer service, of course, and that, that was a budding joke for like the last five years how rude, they hire the rudest people. We know that. But Burger King, their signage, their buildings, it's like whoever's at the tippy top do not care about these restaurants. They never, like I went like two weeks ago to try to get me a Whopper because they mailed out these damn coupons, right? And the guy told me, it was like 9.30 and they closed in like 30 minutes. We don't have anything but Whoppers and some fries. I was like, what are y'all out of food or something? He said, no, we're about to close in 30 minutes. I used to work for Burger King and, you know, you made food up until 10 o'clock as long as people was ordering it. You just didn't have food up in the window. You just made it to order. I'm like, wow. I said, do me a favor. He was like, what? I'm in, in the drive through mind you. I said, just don't even open tomorrow. This is sad. And mind you, this is like the third Burger King I had, second Burger King, third Burger King I had went to that night looking to get something to eat. The other Burger King's lines were to the street. You see two people in there working. It was just the cook and <laughs> the person, uh, you know, taking the orders. I don't mean to dwell on Burger King too long, but back in the 90s, customer service was a thing. Like you didn't get smart with customers because you would get fired. And people that ran these restaurants or businesses understood that, you know, the customers are keeping you in business. Like today, Correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, but today, wow, like these youngins coming up, they're rude as hell. Like, chick at McDonald's, she was playing on the microphone and she was just like, she dropped the F bomb. I'm like, hello, can you hear me? I mean, it's early in the morning. Nobody's in the line. It's breakfast time. So I go inside and I'm like, who was that playing on the microphone saying the F bomb? Like, I really should call corporate on her, but I don't, I don't even care to. Like she'll do that to a secret shopper or something and she'll get fired. But I'm just like, wow, wow. They really do get away with doing whatever, whenever, however. So 
Okay. A lot different from when I was growing up because let me tell you, I don't know what I'm doing here. It is not frozen. Okay. I had to grab something or something. But yeah. So we're just rocking and rolling. I'm going. I'm about to do these with white acrylic. And this is actual white acrylic. And it's uh, Kiara Sky white. It's actually dip powder. I think the white dip powder works better as acrylic than actual white acrylic. So anyways, that was something that was different. Um, oh man, I talked about beepers. Of course, cars and things like that were different. Um, kids today, it's, it's sad. Like in my city, I don't care where you go. You can go to the suburbs. You can go. You don't see kids outside playing like you used to. Like these kids today are technology driven, you know. And at first I thought it was just my son. But when my son was a toddler and he's 10, when my son was a toddler, he was like, he didn't want his toys. He wanted my cell phone because he saw me on it all the time. And then I would hear other parents complain, you know, about their kids always being on YouTube watching you know, adults play with toys and stuff. Those were the most popular videos. Like I could have gotten some Barbies and made some little funny voices. Like I would have been booming 10 years ago on YouTube playing with dolls because little girls all, all across the world would have watched me play with dolls. Like that was the thing. And I would hear other parents complain about it or I would see it on the internet. And I was just like, you know what? My son does the same thing. And then it turned into the baby shark. Y'all remember baby shark? several years ago <laughs> and it now has evolved to like these vloggers claiming that their videos are kid friendly but they're cussing i report those i really do because that's not right so anyways yeah it's just it's crazy how things have changed i understand that change is good in some ways but in some ways it's not always good and for the sake of customer service I'm big on that. I'm big on treat others how you want to be treated. Oof. Corporations, if y'all listening to my little voice, y'all need to just know that some of y'all workers drive y'all money away. Because if you don't clean or if you don't treat the customer with respect when they come in, you got an attitude. You need to leave your attitude at the door. You're here to do a job. If nobody comes to this place and eat, then it shuts down and you don't make money. That's that's on period, you know. So if you don't like people, don't get those jobs. There's like, you know, behind the scene type of jobs, you know. Yeah, you have to be a little more qualified to do those, but you know, yeah. My very first job after high school, and I worked when I was in high school, worked at Burger King, worked at a department store in the mall. Um and then right after high school, I worked for Doubletree in the food service department. And then I worked at banks after that. So like, yeah, there's other jobs. All of those are like customer service based. But, you know, if you're not good with people, just get you a behind the scenes job. Go get a janitorial job or something, you know. You know, hospitals always need janitors. Just saying, go get a uh amazon you know go work for amazon in your warehouse and you still have to work with people you just don't have to deal with customers so there's other jobs you can do that are entry level young people if you know i, I get it you know i understand I've, I've had to go to work and put on a smile but that was the thing i very rarely did i get in trouble or even do it if a boss wasn't even looking um did i get rude with customers because i just didn't have it in me to do that because I knew it was wrong. I guess I have integrity is what I'm saying. And not too many, there are some, but it's becoming rare and scarce with these uh, Gen Zs having some kind of a, uh, you know, customer service skills. But I blame our generation for not teaching them. So what else about the 90s that is different than today? I mean, just the air, you know, the air quality was better. It smelled fresher. How come y'all, hey, have y'all ever noticed that they don't talk about the ozone layer anymore? Like, is it gone? <laughs> you know, they don't push uh, recycling and thinking green anymore like they did, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, did we did we already destroy the ozone layer or something? Somebody let me know. Um, that's one thing I noticed that just kind of, 
went away. Like monkey pox, it just went away. <laughs> they don't, you don't really hear about it no more. You don't hear about the COVID scares as much as in, anymore, you know? Um, and it's unfortunate for those who lost loved ones and lost their lives due to COVID-19. That's not a joke. I caught it just this year. Um, and it wasn't fun. I think I had it before too, 20, the end of 2019. So it wasn't fun. I really felt like I was fighting for my life. So uh, my condolences to anyone that has lost a loved one due to COVID. That is very serious stuff. But you notice they're not scaring us with it as much as they did before. So I don't know. But um, I'm just finishing up these nails. Nothing too crazy. Um, I think I did a good job on this set. So now I'm just going to show a little clip of me filing. If y'all want a filing video, let me know. The last video that I posted, which should be up any minute, it's uh, uploading as we speak, as this is being recorded, or I'm doing my voiceover. I kind of, you know, didn't have it sp sped up as much, and I explained filing a little more. So if you want just a strict filing video, like a 15-minute video on how to file nails, let me know and I can do that. If not, I'm just going to keep it, keep it pushing. But, um, oh man, our, our thing as kids in the nineties was like chasing the ice cream truck in the Midwest. We call him the bomb pop truck or the ding, ding man. That's the Omaha thing. Ding, ding man. Cause he would have the bell ding, 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 ding. You know, the little vans with the ice cream on the side, you pick your ice cream. Those, that was our like main thing. And then growing up, we had the candy lady, the cookie lady. <laughs> we had a, a couple of different candy and cookie ladies. So they would sell little, you know, we had the popsicle lady too. Shouts out to her. Um, yeah, she used to sell 25 cent little popsicles. And I thought that was nice, you know. If you didn't have a popsicle at home, you just take a quarter, dig up 25 cents, you know, get you a popsicle. And sometimes she would give you extra, like, I had a little friend that didn't have a quarter and I wanted a popsicle because I was hot and I was just going to share it with her. Um, she gave me like a free popsicle for my friend because she was like, your friend ain't getting one. I'm like, no, she don't have any money. And she gave me an extra one. So God bless her. God bless her. I don't know if she's still around, but God bless her soul. Um, so little things like that, you know, the elder growing up in the neighborhood that I grew up in, it was a the first neighborhood I grew up in, the one I was born into. It was a close knit neighborhood. And, you know, we saw the adults kind of be on the same wavelength. There was times where they didn't agree, but um, we had neighborhood watch. Uh, those, those orange signs with the creepy hamburger looking guy on it. I was later told as an adult that those signs meant that there was people watching, there was active neighborhood watching that neighborhood and they would actually have meetings. Um, I didn't know that, but I always wonder what that sign meant. I always thought that sign meant like, be careful in this area because it's ghetto. It's 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 rough. <laughs> but no, that that those orange signs. Look it up. Google it if you're young. Those orange warning neighborhood watch signs. Uh, that was because neighborhoods had neighborhood watch. I, it's sad. It's sad to say that today I don't see those signs anymore. Um, because not too many neighborhoods in my city have neighborhood watch anymore. Those people that all did that are either, you know, long gone or, you know, close to it, you know, and it's up to us, you know, the people that's in our 20s and 30s, the adults today, you know, as millennials, we should be doing the neighborhood watches and doing community stuff. So it's on us. We're the adults now. So can we really blame, you know, the other generation, the, the one that's coming up underneath us? Because most of us are parents to teenagers, you know, and young adults. So I know somebody that's my age, that's a damn grandma, because she had a baby early and her, her baby had a baby early. So, you know, it happens. Um, not knocking nobody, not judging nobody, but it's like, I don't care how old you are when you have a child. It's about what you put into that child, you know? I've seen people have kids as young as 14, 13, but they did a damn good job. You know, it might've been rough, but they did a damn good job because they children turned out to be something. So anywho, 
I'm not judging. I say all that to say I'm not judging, but I'm just saying that it put it puts in perspective that, you know, my age group, we can't sit back and just complain. We gotta do stuff. We gotta, we gotta make a change. Okay. Because the elders, when I was growing up, anybody, anybody that was an elder on my block had the right to whip my behind. My mom gave permission to certain ones to whip my behind. You know, uh Mr. and Mrs. Bell, Miss Allen, you know, just to name a couple, you know, they had the right to, and if they saw me doing something wrong and they didn't feel comfortable with me, they tell my mom and she get me, you know, so we always had that accountability growing up. Nowadays, you can't even tell another child to not hit your child without the school or whatever. Oh, don't talk to that child. Man, shut the hell up. Okay. It takes a village to raise these babies. And if the kids feel like, you know, that is sending the wrong message. If kids feel like they can just, you know, bully somebody's child and the parent can't say nothing to them, those kids are going to be like, nanny, nanny, boo, boo, in their head. Like, yeah, you think you're an adult, but you can't say nothing to me. Like, it's so asinine and, and, and crazy and insane. Like, ugh, it's disgusting. I'm talking about Boys and Girls Club, you know. My son ain't participating in that. And if you're going to give money to the Boys and Girls Club, if y'all going to, you know, donate money or whoever, you know, people with money that like to donate to charity, don't donate to Boys and Girls Club because they hire these young Gen Zs that don't know nothing about nothing and don't want to know nothing and can't nobody tell them anything. I demand they get some older people working in there, better pay or something. Because that's where that issue occurred. And all I did was tell little boy, you keep your hands off my son. You keep your hands to yourself. Oh, you can't talk to him. I just did. And I'll talk to his mother if if you let me. Because, you know, I don't I don't condone bullying. Especially just blatant bullying. And then it's always, oh, well, your son did. My son did. No, he's he's a very even, you know, he's a sweet child. And that makes him a target for bullies. Just like how I was, you know, people thought I was a punk, you know, because I was a sweet child. So that's one thing that's constant. Bullies are always going to be constant because there's always going to be children coming from broken homes. And uh, when they see a child being cared for and loved, um, they can sense that. And, you know, if they're not getting that love or attention or something's going on with them at home, nine times out of ten, they're going to turn and, and bully another child. So it starts in the home. Get y'all badass kids. You badass parents, get y'all badass kids before y'all be crying on the news about little Pookie five, 10 years from now. I'm just saying that's just the way things go. Get your badass kids. All right. So off of that, um, food tasted different back in the 90s too. Now they're trying to make everything all healthy, healthy. You know, I, I noticed hot dogs, bologna, things that I used to like as a kid. I hate it now. It tastes like burr. Um, I know like with the soft drinks they took with the high fructose corn syrup because it wasn't healthy, but it made things taste better. Stuff is just nasty. Like Cheeto puffs, excuse me, Cheeto puffs are nasty. Like they don't taste the same. So on and so forth. Those El Monte burritos I used to like. Like, they taste like garbage. <laughs> I used to love those things. Tostino pizzas used to taste better in the 90s. Everything tastes like cardboard. Like, ew. You know, and it ain't because I had COVID. It it happened before COVID. You know, they changed the, the recipe of the Butterfinger, and I'm really upset about that. They should have left my Butterfingers alone. Like, I hate Butterfingers now. You know, that was, like, one of my favorites. They better not mess with the M&Ms. The peanut M&Ms, do not touch those. Whatever's in there, leave them alone. And they don't even taste as good as in the 90s. So everything is just trying to be all health, healthy. And oh, let me tell y'all kids about the restaurant. So Burger King and McDonald's had this thing called King Size and Super Size. They got rid of it. And I'm sure y'all seen plenty of videos on YouTube about it. If you're anything like my son, he'd be looking up old commercials from the 90s and stuff. So no more Super Size because people were overweight. Well, us skinny people with high metabolism, we want the super size back. <laughs> it's, it's no greater feeling than having, you know, 
a large soft drink of choice that you don't have to refill because it's big enough. All right, so I finished these nails. This thumb is a little lumpy, but like I said, that's going to happen because you can't really file a fake hand perfectly because it's the resistance. All you can do is try to lay it better. That middle finger is straight as hell, though, I'll tell you that. So that was just me going down memory lane about how back then is different than now and parenting and adults are even different now. So, all right, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed this story time with me. Make sure y'all subscribe and like this video so that I can come back and give y'all more content. These are like just the last little model poses of the hand. And thank y'all so much. Make sure y'all subscribe and come back for another story time. Peace.